And greetings. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio and podcast. Good to be back home. Temps in the 70s today and it's like perfect because it's going to feel like late spring, early summer, but the bugs and stuff aren't above ground yet to pester you, right? So it's like the perfect time to be outside, get some of that uh, winter shine uh, or uh, white uh, get, that, get some of that off you. So uh, in a good mood when the calendar turns to March and it feels like maybe winter is in the uh, uh, is in the rearview mirror. Uh, Todd Erzin is here with me. Aaron McIntyre is here with me as well. It, it's also a pretty good weekend when you have your first grandkid. Congrats, Grandpa. That's Congrats, awesome. yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, I I didn't do anything. I mean, Anastasia did all the work. And then uh, her uh, husband, uh, Stephen, as uh, she needed some time to recover from uh, putting that work in, he actually did all the feeding and changing of the first batch of diapers. So I need to ask him, a third tour in a rock or changing those diapers before they... Uh, before they can eat some solid food. You remember those days, before they can oh. eat some solid food, the Changed years worth of a that? ton of diapers. Yeah, I Tons. did too. I did my tour duty. That's the only time in my life I've ever masked up is uh, to change diapers. I just, I couldn't handle the smell. I had to, they've got pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> they've, got, they've got pictures of me wearing like, you know, winter caps around my face to change the, the kids' diapers when they were little. So uh, Autumn Elizabeth, there she is. She was born over the weekend. She just got to go home with mama and daddy. So uh, we are very, very anxious to uh, get a chance here later this week to go and uh, meet our granddaughter in person. We've done, uh, you know, FaceTime and everything else. But uh, we want to make sure we give uh, mom and dad the space that they want to get used to being parents and get everything in order. And so uh, Autumn Elizabeth, you guys asked for pictures. I was uh, I cleared the tower to get, be able to show you one. There she is. Autumn Elizabeth was born over the weekend. And uh, so many kind words in my inbox from so many of you on social media. I, I cannot possibly reply to them all, except let me just reply all and say thank you very much for all of that. And uh, we're extremely, Man, extremely positive. Is this the busiest weekend of correspondence you've ever had considering the other well, that, issue? that does bring up the other <laughs> issue. Friday's show received more response I think than any show I've ever been a part of in my entire career. And I can't it, believe that. And it and it is still coming in. I can't is, believe that. It is still coming in. And you've done some shows, man. We I have. mean, you've done some shows. I, I, I think and and I would say it's it's about eighty five fifteen in favor of what transpired in the totality of the show, even if you don't agree particularly with the some of the opinions that Paul expressed uh in uh, in the first thirty minutes. Just the amount of people, maybe maybe we just attract that type and the people that aren't just have so many other shows to go to, but but there is clearly, at least within this audience, whatever that represents in our little sliver of the world here, there is clearly, a, a, you know, a desire to have some real conversations again, you know, some, some real um, constructive confrontations again to hear people say some hard things and then have some hard things said back to them after they do again. Uh, and um, Paul uh, sent me a, a, a wonderful note. He went back and listened to the entirety of Friday's show after he was on and sent me a wonderful note. It's posted on all of my social medias. If you want to go look at it, at Steve Day Show on Twitter, Steve Dace on Facebook, MeWe, Gab, Getter, Steve Day Show on Getter, actually. And uh, and it really talks about how he's undergone his own um, his own spiritual awakening. Um, over the last couple of years. In particular, he's fascinated with a guy I know who has been on this show before. Uh, Jay Warner Wallace is a former LAPD cold case detective that has uh, that does a masterful job with apologetics. And some of you may have seen him as one of the witnesses that was called to the stand in God's Not Dead 2. Uh, so he mentioned uh, how he's been following his work. That reminds me, I need to text I need to text Jay because he would get a he'd get a big kick out of hearing that, you know. So um yeah, I mean the reaction to that show on Friday was insane, and it and it continues to pour in. So, thank you, you know, and I I don't want to reiterate everything I said in the second hour on Friday, but if we don't find some constructive, I'll just reiterate this: if we cannot find some constructive ways to confront each other, one way or the other, 
and just let the pressure out of the valve at least a little bit, it's going to, it's going to blow up on us in destructive ways. One of the worst days of my life, I was a kid growing up on Royal Oak Street. We had a clog in a toilet that we just kind of managed with a plunger and let it go on and on and on and on and on. And if the toilet got stuck, we just plunged it, you know. And you can only do that for so long, right? And one day that pipe burst in the basement. The pressure was too much. What came out of that pipe? I'd rather go back and change the kids' diapers without a mask. What came out of that t- what came out of that pipe was wrong. And I, I didn't see or smell sights like that again until I took that mission trip to Haiti about a decade ago. And I remember it vividly. It was beyond disgusting. And it's our own fault because we just kept kicking the can down the road. And then eventually the levee breaks, the pipe bursts, and something worse than if you just had addressed it head on ends up coming forward. And that's where we're headed as a people. And the enemy wants that. That's why there aren't really too many places for that pressure valve to be released. He, he wants the pressure to build, the strategy. Does the enemy prefer one ideology over and over? Of course he does. But understand, the people that are peddling the ideology he prefers, he hates them too. Because they are also made in the image of God. And so the chance to pit us against each other in a Kobayashi Maru no-win scenario, the end of the dark night with the bomb placed on both rafts and just feel free, have at each other. That's the end game here. And if we don't find some ways where people feel like they can say what they really think, and then you feel like, because that can't be one-sided either. It can't be, hey, we let, you know, our Democrat friend come on here and say a bunch of hard things to us. And then we, 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 we heavy petted him the rest of the way. No, that's not, that's not an exchange, is it? No. No. That's not. That's posturing, pandering. And to his credit, Paul didn't ask for that. Paul, Paul has listened to the Steve Day show before. I, I, I assume that he thought saying such things may raise the stakes of the conversation uh, after the fact. Fair? Fair. And did it do so? It yeah. did. It did. That's an actual conversation. Okay, yeah. You had some things to say. Maybe there's some value there. Maybe there's some not. I'll mull it over. I've got some things maybe you need to mull over. We desperately need this as a people. Otherwise, that pressure is going to burst. And what's going to come out of that pipe? It's going to make what came out of those pipes in the basement on Royal Oak Street in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Look like Christmas vacation. Easter is forthcoming here in a few weeks. You guys made the first week of Why Easter a tremendous success. So thank you for that. If you want to get your copy, they're available right now. Why Easter? Jesus died for us so we can live forever. It is book two in my trilogy of children's books on America's Christian heritage. Uh, You can order it right now at Amazon.com if you would like to do that. I know a bunch of you have already gone over to uh, SignedWhyEaster.com SignedWhyEaster.com and even done the customized autographs. I did a bunch of those yesterday afternoon and you should be getting uh, if you're in that first batch of those you should be getting those pretty soon so you can get uh, a, just a, a regular autographed one you can get a custom autographed one at signedwhyeaster.com again that's signedwhyeaster.com or just go and get your copy at amazon.com and and thank you for all of that you guys um we have gotten no help promoting this beyond our own ecosystem and so you guys have done a great job in uh, making this thing a successful launch so thank you very much for that also thank you very much for our friends at first cup coffee company they sponsor the steve days show with a flavor for every freedom loving american the roast date is right there on each bag they're shipped within a few days of being roasted and if you want to try some great coffee number one it's a great product just trust, trust Aaron on that. I'm not a coffee drinker, but he swears by it. It's a, if it's a great product, number one. That's the first thing. It's a meritocracy here. We're not telling you to buy stuff. If people make Christian movies and they're bad, I'll tell you. 
You don't owe anybody anything that's for in, a, in the marketplace because they make a bad product and don't let them guilt you. If they don't, because, well, I share your values, so waste your money on me. Nope. You've wasted the talent the master gave you. Do better. They do that at first cup. They make a hell of a cup of coffee. And as a bonus now, now they share your values. And that's where you give them the benefit of the doubt. When they make a product as good as the best products out there, then the tie goes to the believer. So go to firstcup.com, get 10% off with the promo code DACE. If you subscribe, you can receive an additional 10% off for the life of, of the subscription. Firstcup.com, promo code DACE, firstcup.com, promo code DACE. All right, so after a busy weekend update, let's get to it. Here's Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by to ban TikTok or not to ban TikTok. The House Energy and Commerce Committee voted 50 to nothing late last week to advance a bill that would force the divestment of ByteDance, the parent company of the Chinese spyware app TikTok, within 165 days or face banning the app altogether. That followed days of a harsh pressure campaign on the part of TikTok, which provided users with their representative's phone number. Apparently, phones were ringing off the hook in congressional offices last week. The bill is set to be voted upon in the U.S. House this week. If it passes through Congress, Joe Biden is expected to sign it into law. But the story within the story here is fascinating, as some on the right who previously supported banning TikTok are changing their tune. Donald Trump on Truth Social said last week he's now against banning the app or forcing its divestment because this somehow gives Facebook more power. Vivek Ramaswamy, who once called the app Digital Fentanyl and pilloried during a GOP debate Nikki Haley's daughter for using the app, well, he said over the weekend he's now against banning it. By the way, one of Vivek's biggest donors during his presidential campaign is Jeff Yass, who is a major GOP donor elsewhere and has tens of billions of dollars invested in TikTok. Huh. The U.S. Embassy in Haiti is the seventh U.S. Embassy to be evacuated so far during Joe Biden's time in the White House. Criminal gangs have essentially overrun the country, busting large numbers of criminals out of prisons and overrunning police forces in Port-au-Prince. Meanwhile, Biden is apologizing for accurately calling Lake and Riley's murderer an illegal during the State of the Union address. Uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look. Also during that MSNBC interview, Biden says he does not approve of Israel invading the southern Gaza city of Rafa. There's red lines that if he crosses and they can, he cannot have 30,000 more Palestinians dead. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defied Biden on Sunday. Oh, we'll go there. We're not going to leave them. Uh, you know, I have a red line. You know what the red line is? That October 7th doesn't happen again never happens again. A new bill proposed in the state of Missouri would force groomers working in official capacities at schools to register as sex offenders and be liable for a felony if they provide any support whatsoever for mentally ill students who think they're not the sex God gave them at birth. Missouri State Representative Jamie Gragg, a Republican, introduced House Bill 2885 last week. It passed and signed into law. The legislation would criminalize the act of, quote, contributing to social transition for anyone acting in an official capacity at their school, including providing information or material support. TV star Rockman Dunbar of 911 fame was fired from that show back in 2021 for refusing to take the COVID jab. Dunbar had attempted to obtain a religious exemption, citing his membership in the Church of Universal Wisdom, whatever the heck that is, but was, of course, denied. Dunbar then filed a lawsuit alleging that he had been discriminated against for the studio's refusal to grant his exemption. On Friday, U.S. District Judge Dolly Gee ruled that Dunbar may, in fact, have been discriminated against, meaning the suit will go forward to trial. And finally, meet the ever-elusive undecided voter. My name's Bob Cheeseward, and I am a swing state undecided voter. Every four years, I get a lot of gifts. Box of nuts from the Republican National Convention. Geez, that's nice. Nintendo Switch, got this from the Vatican. Cutting knives from the Tijuana Cartel. Boy, did they have a message for me. Everybody's trying to get a piece of the cheese. My last name's Cheese. It's so hard to choose. Well, you're just going to have to pick one. It's like nuts a million. You know, I've always been real indecisive ever since I was a kid. I remember one time my mom asked if I wanted peanut butter or jelly, and I thought, gee whiz, that's a tough one. But she said, no, 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 honey, I asked if you wanted a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and I thought, 
thank goodness. What a relief, because I was not about to make that call. My wife, Peggy, uh, she is a decided voter, uh, so they don't really give her as many gifts or anything. Uh, Bob, Congressman Emer is calling for you. No, I'm not 100% sure yet who, I, uh, who I'm going to vote for. Well, I just can't quite decide. It turns out that my vote carries like 7,000 times as much weight as your average American. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not even, you know... Uh, Smart. Right, yeah. I mean, I'm about as sharp as an alden. I think everybody would love to see Trump and Biden going into the same office. I mean, wouldn't that be a dream come true? And that's what happened while we were away. That's that's very well done. The look on the wife's face yeah. the entire time, too, is that's very well done. Aaron's Montage brought to you by Patriot Mobile for a decade now. They have been on the cutting edge of helping to build America's parallel economy. Finally, some folks are also getting in that fight. Thankfully, one place where you no longer have to give money directly to people who hate you if you don't want is with one product that we all need nowadays to thrive in modern society, our mobile phone. So make the switch today to Patriot Mobile. Uh, If you're a veteran or first responder, they'll say uh, extra ways to say thank you if you let them know. Uh, Thank you for your service. For the rest of us, use the offer code Steve to get a free activation uh, when you go to PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. Get access to all the major networks out there. You can switch at any time for free uh, if you indeed want to access Patriot Mobile. Outstanding customer service team. They have been incredible for us every time we have needed them in our family. So keep your phone, switch your phone, keep your number, switch your number. They'll customize it to whatever works best for you and your needs. PatriotMobile.com slash Steve, offer code Steve. PatriotMobile.com slash Steve, offer code Steve. All right, to the montage we go. We're going to talk more about TikTok and to ban or not to ban coming up in the next segment of the program. Our good buddy Bob Vanderplotz will join us next hour. Also, ask me anything coming your way. So we're looking forward to that. But but for now, whether it's Vivek Ramaswamy, I, I, I mean, I, 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 you guys were right. You guys were right. I mean, I thought maybe you guys had kind of prematurely ridden him off. You were right. I mean, the the level of soulless opportunist. I, I, I sat right next to his wife at the Miami debate in the front row of that debate. It's Mrs. DeSantis, it's Steve Dace, and it's Mrs. Ramaswamy. The three of us sitting together in the front row of the Miami debate. I am 25 yards from where Max, from where, from where Vivek so broke down Nikki Haley, she mumbled under her breath, you're a disgrace. And, and for what? Because I agree, Nikki Haley is a disgrace, but in this case, what was it for? It was because her daughter was actively utilizing TikTok. So she was essentially an unwitting agent of Shycom Agitprop. And I have to tell you, I, I don't know what to say about a person who on one end, when was that? Early November? So four months ago, that was four months ago. That was early, like no, no, like November eighth or something. So four months ago, in four, the level of certainty. Go back and watch that clip. The level of certainty he speaks with when he destroys her, and then to turn right around with the same level of certainty and say, "No, we shouldn't do it." I, I just, I, I I'm done. That's a tap out for me. I mean. That's a more polished version of Mitt Romney. I don't, you know. And of course, he has no record on anything, so there's nothing to hold him accountable to. It's just, I, I don't even know what to say about that, you know. And I know some of you won't like that. I mean, you tell me, how am I supposed to respond? I sat right next to his wife. I was 20, 25 yards from him when I saw him basically assassinate Nikki Haley because her kid was on TikTok, her adult kid, by the way. And then to turn right around and say... Well, we can't ban it. I see Kellyanne Conway is on. I saw the story over the weekend. Mark Levin uh, shared it, that she's out there lobbying Capitol Hill 
for on behalf of TikTok. See, this is why we never drain the swamp. Why we never lock her up. Why we never throw the bums out. Why we end up crashing our own tea party. In the end, our side, too many people will just cash the check in the end. Every time. Every time. Yep. They'll just cash the check every time. Dana White, $100 million from Bud Light. Welcome aboard. We are caught between one side that has sold its soul to the enemy and the spirit of the age, but on, which is bad, but on the other hand, that means they can't be bought off. You, know, you see what I'm saying? They've, they've already gone off to the highest bidder, Abaddon. So no one's, anybody outbid, Ab, get outbid Abaddon? Giving up your own soul, not getting outbid at that point, right? Mm-hmm. 100 million from Bud Light, you gave up your own soul, not happening, right? So we have a bunch of people, we're up against one, one movement that has already sold its soul to the spirit of the age. And we are and trying to answer that with people who would willingly love to sell out. Provided the price is right. I, I can't imagine why we never win. Would you like to start on the book of Romans right now? <laughs> nice. Um, I don't even know what to say about... Uh, I think Biden is saying refer to Lake and Riley's killer as an undocumented immigrant, not an illegal. But I, 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 I can't. I'm going to take your word for it that that's what he said there. Because I honestly am not sure what he says most of the time. But that's just despicable. He, he asked Pennsylvania over the weekend to send him to Congress. Oh, boy. See, this uh, uh, the one time I tweeted uh, this weekend about what transpired on Friday. It was retweeting the clip of him saying this and saying, this is why I went as hard as I did. If you're going to come after Trump that hard, amen, brother. But if you allow this guy, it's wiggle room. Nope. Just terrible, terrible, terrible human being. It's just... It's devout tough Catholic. Not to, That's devout Catholic <laughs> to you. It's, yeah. it's tough yeah. not to become numb or callous to the abject evil that the story is. This was an illegal alien, a criminal before, I believe, and definitely after he crossed the border illegally. He was arrested, I believe, in New York City for battery to a, a minor, like Hurting a minor. And it sounds like he's part of some sort of MS-13 level gang. I, I had not heard that. He re- he just, it was not, it was just, uh, we're being told a random crime of opportunity. He literally reshaped an innocent young woman's skull just because it was Tuesday. And they're more upset about him being called an illegal than that. Tell me how I, we're so used to that level of just abject just unspeakable evil it's tough not to get callous to it those two stories back to back symbolize what i just said joe biden represents a movement that has an ideology that has sold its soul to the spirit of the age to the point that you must now show regard and honor for the murderer while at the same time during his state of the union address he tells us all that it was the Oklahoma football coach who was killed. And what's our response? Vivek Ramaswamy hurting for money? I know for a fact he's no. on a private plane. He's good, man. Vivek's living a nice life. He would even if he even if he weren't successful at all, his wife's a decorated surgeon. So between his corporate exploits and hers, think they think they're wondering where the next meal's coming from? No. So why the hell do you need to sell out? That's just a character flaw. I mean, that's just, that's not desperation. You just don't have any, see what I'm saying? You just don't have any, you don't have any baseline integrity. Why does Kellyanne Conway need to lobby for TikTok? Is she in a breadline? Her family's a disaster. Well, maybe she should be at home then. Yeah. And not on Capitol Hill lobbying for TikTok. Nevertheless, no is the answer. She's not. So this isn't, Hey, man, Papa needs a new pair of shoes. Grandma got to eat. 
Hate the game, not the player then, right? Okay, got to put food on. These people have all the money they'll ever need. This is just a lack of impersonal integrity. That's what it is. And that's, 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 that's who we're going to send to the front lines against honor the murderer. This is why it's the least important election of our lifetime. We have no home here. Yeah. None. Thinking about that a lot over the weekend. I mean, a movement, a faction of, of politics driven by the pursuit of power is always going to beat a faction of politics driven by the pursuit of mammon. Correct. Or whatever. Correct. Conviction always wins. The most, the side most convicted in the rightness of its cause has won every conflict in all of human history. Every time. Now this works the other way too, and you see this in the exchange between Biden and Netanyahu. What the hell would that doddering old fool's red line look like? Do you even know? What would that even look like? Well, somebody else would be feeding it to him, Correct. whatever it was. I mean, what we, we, I mean, we, it's vanilla pudding instead of tapioca. I mean, what's the red line at the Biden White House? What is that? Man, what, what the hell? Who the hell respects that red line? Well, apparently Republicans in Congress David do. David French. Point of order. Another column. Yeah. When we feature clips of Biden talking, should we refer to them not as Biden says, but as Biden's handlers says? Correct. Say? Yeah, because I don't know that he knows what the hell he's ever saying. But Bibi Netanyahu, you messed this up once. And that's why October the 7th happened. This is your lasting legacy, brother. Don't mess it up this time. Now, that looked like a man that's not, that's not planning on messing it up this time. Maybe he'll disappoint us because he's bloviated at times in the past, too, true, and then not falling very, through, right? True, yeah. but, but this doesn't seem like bloviation to me. This, this, this just looks like a dude kind of at the end of his legacy, kind of he knows this is his last run at his age. I mean, this isn't, you know, some grandstanding speech. Well, I've got a red line, too. That's never happening again. Just that seemed very resolved to me. I've been disappointed before. Maybe he'll disappoint me again, but... If you're going to challenge the presidency of the United States head on like that, you better follow through then. Right? Yes. Yeah. Let's hope that he does. Final thing, Missouri. Is this an ingenuine, um, or should I say ingenious way of getting people to out themselves? Similar to, let's take the illegals, let's not deport them, but send them to Martha's Vineyard and New York City, okay? Or should Missouri just be like, we're, we're, we're just going to skip right to the purge here and throw all these people out of the schools? Thoughts? Or do you maybe need to do one in order to accomplish the other? Yeah, that's... I'm and so this is politically smart. Either way, Missouri... Shoots pretty close to the top of the list of retirement mistress. That's uh, well done. Of course, you know, you got to you got to mean it. I'm Steve. I'm you know, I'm hearing that uh, the the bill that you and I went uh, to testify on mm -hmm. behalf might not get through. See, don't just go go watch football all the time if you're not gonna or, or whatever else your hobby is if you're not capable of seeing this through don't waste my time do not waste my time for people that don't know this is the bill that mirrors the one in florida that you can on a public document there's no other designation other than male or female yeah, yeah. in iowa in yeah. iowa yeah I, I will say this every single deep red state should be full of legislators that are willing to chuck things out like this. Not chuck things out, but put this into the ecosystem, a bill like this. I don't think it even goes far enough. But even if it's dead on arrival, this is mirroring what Democrats do when they're in power. They put something out there that it's totally outlandish, and then Republicans say, oh, that's too much, and then they dial it back to maybe 25% of what the original ask was for. Meanwhile, they're moving the ball f further and further leftward. That's what Republican-dominated legislatures should be doing. If they can't get the whole Monty done, just at least move it rightward. More in a moment.
know, we've been talking about the free online courses they offer at Hillsdale. Erin Herrera in Birmingham, Alabama, sent me a note. She took the, uh, the, the course on economics and prosperity with Art Laffer. And just in this note, raved about how great that course was. Just blew her mind, uh, what was there, how it took complicated ideas and explained them in ways that, uh, that she could understand. They've got a case right now on American citizenship and its decline taught by historian Victor David Hansen. Victor Davis Hansen, I should say. The course traces the history of citizenship and explains how it's undermined in America today by open borders, by identity politics, by the administrative state, by globalization. Let me give you a subtle just way we do this. When we say we're a nation of immigrants, no, we're not. We're a nation of citizens. We're a nation of citizens. There's never, ever been a nation of immigrants, ever. We're a nation of citizens. You come here, you immigrate here to either become a citizen or for other reasons that are bad. So that's just one subtle way that we are doing what Victor Davis Hanson warns about in this course that he teaches at Hillsdale. If you want to sign up today for Hillsdale's free online course, American Citizenship and Its Decline, visit daceforhillsdale.com. That's daceforhillsdale.com. Again, free course for you, daceforhillsdale.com. Let's welcome in our good friend, Bob Vanderplotz. Good to see you again, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. As I said earlier, congratulations, Grandpa. Exciting stuff. Yep, very excited. Uh, everybody's doing great, and uh, we are very, very blessed. Uh, just a quick postscript to last week's conversation about Caitlin Clark. You bet. I, I did something yesterday I have never done before <laughs> in my entire life, and I'm not even a, I'm not even a Hawkeye fan. But um, I was listening to their game against Nebraska in the Big Ten Tournament Championship yesterday as I was running a few errands. I stayed in my truck to, to get to the game as it was going into overtime to listen to the overtime and its culmination all the way through because I wanted to see how it ended mm-hmm. or hear how it ended for that matter. I have never done that before. And well, I think that just kind of uh, speaks to why she was worthy, regardless of how you came down on it, but why she's worthy of the conversation we had last week. And, you know, she is so special. So, Steve, you stayed in your car. My wife, Darla, was laying on the couch after having the grandkids overnight. And you're going to get to experience that now, having the grandkids overnight. And so she was just shot. She wanted to take a nap. <laughs> and she couldn't sleep. She kept watching the game. And she's kind of basketballed out because all of our kids played basketball. Kind of like, so I, I really, you know, I'm glad she's doing well, but I really don't care. She was having so much fun watching that game. She couldn't sleep, I think, for probably an hour afterwards to finally get that nap. Congratulations to Caitlin and the Hawkeyes. Though. Tremendous. Well, let's talk about some uh, courage of conviction, can we? Love to. So last November, I think it was the 8th, I am in Miami, Florida. I am in the front row of the GOP presidential debate. And I am about 20, 25 yards maximum from where the candidates are. And you're sitting at Casey DeSantis. And I'm sitting between Mrs. DeSantis and Mrs. Ramaswamy. A lot of men would not mind sitting there, by the way. Okay? <laughs> Casey but, and Apoorva, you yeah, bet. Yeah, they, neither one are unattractive ladies, for sure. And I'm so I spent two to three hours that night, before and after, I'm sitting between them at this debate. So I'm sitting next to Mrs. Ramaswamy as I watch Vivek completely disembowel Nikki Haley to the point that that she muttered, you're a disgrace to, towards him under her breath. Hmm. Why? Why? Because her daughter was monetizing TikTok as an adult, as an, as an adult influencer on TikTok. All right. Not, hey, your little kids are at home while you're running for president. Go be a mom. It's her adult daughter was on TikTok and he absolutely disemboweled her for this. Because of the connection to China. Yes. And, and, and the amount of cultural rot gut that gets injected into our culture from that platform, I would say more than any platform in the, in the country, more cultural rot gut gets injected from that platform than any other. Okay. And the now, stuff China would never allow inside their country. Correct. Ever. And, but, but now, all of a sudden, because there's a couple of high dollar GOP donors that don't want it to go away. And also because he wants to be the running mate to the guy who's high dollar donor donors don't want it to go away. Now he has completely flipped course. And, you know, I'm the guy that basically exposed Mitt Romney back in the day when no one else was willing to do so. 
I remember it. Remember I, it well. I, I thought I have seen levels of like borderline sociopathic behavior. Your ability to just flip on a dime. It was the old saying that we used to have about Romney in those days. Feels passionate about every side of every issue. Yeah. I've never seen Romney would at least blush at the shamelessness of Vivek shows by the way he personally destroyed someone over this with a level of conviction that you would think you cannot fake. And then to turn right around now that his self-interest have changed with a completely different level of conviction. I know you know him well. He hurting for money. Does he really need the, the, the money that bad? I think he's okay. He, he's doing. How about really, Kellyanne he, Conway? He, he, someone both you and I know well. Yeah. On Capitol Hill lobbying for TikTok. She in a bread line. She you know, she want you know she at a lower level in Manhattan penthouse than she was in before. I mean this is, this is why we always lose, is that in the end. The other side has sold its soul to the spirit of the age, so it cannot be bartered with. And our guys just want to get $100 million. Dana White wants $100 million from, from Bud Light. Okay. Ah, we're going to lock her up. But yeah, she's not that bad now that I think about it. You know, um, Cut the deal. Cut the deal. Take the deal. Take the deal. I, I, explain this. Well, I, I don't know if you can explain it, but you know, go back to Mayor Romney. You and I remember when he was talking about illegal immigration and Huckabee called him out on, and you've got them working at your home. Right. You, you've got them mowing your yard, clipping your, your hedges, all that. Mm -hmm. But on the accountability piece, I, I watched Vivek's video on about TikTok. Now, that, that's a complete 180 of the Miami debate. In the Miami debate, Steve, not only were you sitting between uh, Casey and Aporva, but I think back in Iowa, we could hear your cheers for his, I mean, that debate he took on mm -hmm. uh, Rana, whatever her name right. is, who who had I clapped the, yeah. the Republican Party, yeah. And now all of a sudden, Trump is saying, "Listen, uh, it's not that bad. We should allow this to take place." And so, therefore, the complete change of course is. I mean, if you have a conviction one way or another, because uh, we all know that free speech is is tough, uh, private ownership is tough. But maybe we need to show, I mean, what are the convictions here? And we did see a flip-flop with him. I had not heard what Kellyanne Conway's position was before, understand that she's lobbying members of Congress mm -hmm. uh, to keep TikTok alive and well. If we can't get rid of something that is a clear device of the only global competitor we have right now in the planet, that is a a primary tool for the injecting of just absolute from the pit of Abaddon rot gut into the culture. How many kids do you think ended up getting castrated or puberty blockers because they, they talked about their confused feelings about sexuality and gender idea, uh, gender identity on a TikTok video and the comment section convinced them that they should go forward with this. How many kids do you think it is? Because I bet you it's countless. Yeah, it is. I believe it is countless. I think the percentage would be exceptionally high. I would, where, I where would, TikTok, I would, that's where they got I their information guess TikTok, on it. Yes, I would guess TikTok is the greatest recruiter for, the, for, for bottoms and tops surgeries in the West, yeah. I would guess. If we can't ban that, then, then what? Then what are we honestly doing here? No, I, I agree with you, Steve. And I think what it is some people would be talking about free speech. They'll be talking about private ownership. But take a look at the other debate issue inside of this campaign. And this was Vivek and and Nikki Haley. It was Governor Ron DeSantis and others. But it was about uh, the Chi or Chinese government owning what? Owning land in mm -hmm. our country. You, I mean, do you really want Chinese buying up America? And they're saying you do not want that. So there needs to be restrictions on that. You need, so with TikTok, you can be doing the same type of thing. And I think what Congress showed, I believe, is a unanimous vote on this. We'll see where it goes from here now that Donald Trump has weighed in. Uh, but I think most of them are willing to be steadfast and send a message here. And I hope they do. Todd was telling us, before, this is a different issue, but the same thing. And it actually touches on the issue we were just discussing in a different way. Todd was telling me before the break that, that the, the, the issue that him and I both went and testified at the legislature on a few weeks ago, uh, the, the bill in Iowa that would basically mirror, you know, in, in, in some ways, what they did in Florida already, that public documents are only going to provide designations for males and females, that, we're, that, that may not actually make it through now. Is what he's telling me? Yeah, you know, that, that's the first I actually heard of it when I came in the studio uh, before doing this show. And I just had a meeting with our elections and policy chair and our whole policy team was in there. 
and nobody raised that caution flag. Now, sometimes they can be very careful raising caution flags in meetings because they're working on getting the vote where they want the vote to be. Mm-hmm. But Steve, you're exactly right. If we can't take if we can't take a stand on a winning issue, not just with the Republicans and conservatives, but with independents and and right leaning right uh, leaning Democrats, this is a simple issue: a uh, male and female. This one is not hard. So I can't believe that's the case. But I'll check into it uh, after the show. There are literally only two issues right now in all in the pantheon of issues where we have any semblance of momentum beyond a talking point, but we're actually enacting policy and moving forward on it in meaningful ways beyond, again, talking points. School choice is one. Yep. We've already checked that box here in Iowa. Th- this is the other issue. Yep. Same I mean, girl sports, yeah, male, female, yeah, I, the I, whole deal. I, heading into an election year, why would you not want to take advantage of that momentum. Well, that's something that's above my pay grade because to me, it's like, you know, you embrace that issue. You remember back in 2009, 2010, when I was running for governor, marriage between a man and a woman in a Republican primary, that was gold. You mm-hmm. don't run from that issue. You embrace that issue. And we did judicial activism. That was gold. You, you embrace that issue. You don't run from that issue. In today's age, if I'm running for public office, I want this issue. I want this this gender issue being asked at every debate, putting my opponent on the defense there. In the same way with school choice, in regards to mom and dads have the responsibility to raise, nurture a child, not the government. You talk about courage begetting courage. We talked about the lack of courage or the change of courage or the, you know, whatever it is of courage. I got called by a, a, a Texas donor who doesn't call me all the time. And I was walking into an event where I was going to have dinner with Governor Kim Reynolds at another deal. And he called to thank me and to say, and to say, listen, you guys were an inspiration for us in Texas. We primaried all these individuals who went past school choice. We think we're going to win 17 of them, which means that we're going to get universal school choice in the state of Texas. And I said to him, I said, uh, well, thanks for giving me a lot of praise and credit and that stuff. I said, but I'm going to have dinner here in just about 15 minutes with Governor Kim Reynolds. And I'm telling you, this guy went euphoric, just euphoric about Governor Kim Reynolds and her leadership goes back to Governor Ron DeSantis and his leadership and basically say Governor Greg Abbott would not have done that without the courage of his two peers to see why this is a winning issue, why they would back away from this uh, gender definition, gender, whatever it is. I have no idea. That's a winning issue. It should be a winning issue long term. Can we can we call Governor Reynolds after the after the segment today and encourage <laughs> yeah. her to make a few well, phone well, calls down well, to the, the capital. I'll first visit with my EMP team to make sure what is is. Yeah. And then if, my, if I need to weigh in, I'll definitely weigh in. I guarantee you, we're not worried about a waffling Kim Reynolds on this issue. Aaron had a juxtaposition of clips in his montage that I, I think perfectly encapsulate what we are discussing. On the, on the one hand, well, now that some GOP donors don't want TikTok to go away, we have to go ahead and continue to let the Shycoms inject agitprop uh, and rot gut into the culture. Continue to okay? destroy us from within. Correct. And, and take advantage of our kids at the same time. On the other hand, and again, it, it, his, under his current mental state, I don't know that we're always adequately quoting Joe Biden uh, because I don't, I don't know what the sure. hell he is saying most of the time. Yep. Just straight up. I mean, I just don't know. But it sounded to me. Anyway, like in an interview over the weekend, he corrected an interviewer and, and, and actually apologized for referring to Lakin, not the Oklahoma football coach. They kept telling everybody he was killed last week. Lakin Riley's murderer uh, as an illegal is an illegal rather than an undocumented immigrant. OK, and to me, I, I think that those two those two clips back to back, Bob, are in many respects excellent snapshots with the exceptions of some of the names you just mentioned of the of of, of where both parties currently are yeah. on one hand you have one party that has completely sold its soul to the spirit of the age and therefore won't be leveraged won't be moved you you won't get them you won't show them a poll that will show them that they're going to lose 30 house seats and everything and so they need to moderate and triangulate like bill clinton did nothing they won't be moved that that, that transaction has been completed they mm-hmm. have received their reward in full they're on a mission from abaddon and they're going to finish that mission even if it means giving honor uh, to a murderer on national television yeah. on the other side is 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 too many people that are looking to sell out so one one side is is completely 
sold to the spirit of the age. Then another group would just like to sell out to whoever's cutting a check, whether that's Dana White, whether that's, you know, uh, Vivek's pack donor, whether that's Trump's donors, uh, it's just whatever deal we can cut in the end, the grift, the money means more than the principal. In history, when have the money people ever beaten the principal people? So, so Spoiler alert yeah. is never, yeah. actually. Yeah. So the thing it is, where you want to go to is, first of all, the question is, well, what do you really believe? And why do you believe what you believe to be really real? And uh, for many politicians, you know this as well as I do from interviewing them and being guests with them, all that stuff. They can't answer some of the very basic questions. Mm -hmm. What Biden said there was, I think, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. He believes that guy is an illegal. His party says, you can't believe that guy's an illegal at all. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what does he do? He comes right around and he makes this correction. Same thing happened with Obama in 2008. You'll recall this. Obama, remember with um, uh, Pastor Rick Warren? Marriage he was still pretending to be a pastor. Marriage is between a man and a woman, period. Right. North Carolina votes marriage, affirms marriage between a man and a woman. And Obama's there the next day saying, I've changed my view. It's I'm all in now for same sex marriage. Why his party told him that's where you need to be. What's happening on the other side, the Republicans, is that it's either the donor class or, quite frankly, you know, it's whatever Trump believes at this point. And I'm not saying Trump is always wrong, but I don't think he's always right either. What is your conviction? Mm -hmm. And what people are looking for today is to send leaders either to governorships or to Congress or to state legislatures who have a spirit of conviction and they understand why. They believe what they believe, and they're able to articulate it and convince others why they believe what they believe to be true. Bob, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Always a pleasure. Todd, Aaron, either one of you have any thoughts on uh, the conversation we just had? Well, one of perhaps multiple options, but we weighed as much as any option is if the uh, the opposite of the moral majority has to happen that the, the, the back in 1980 when evangelicals really went all in and got involved in it with it get in, got involved in politics does the exact opposite need to happen i i just don't know there's there are people that are they just count on taking advantage of us now they count on us doing all of the work uh on their behalf and then we get shanked and and sold out in the end i just you guys have some tough decisions to make, Bob, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, and I think, you know, and I, 30 seconds. I mentioned this before just to a group that we had in national group. I said, listen, you guys keep looking at Washington, D.C. If you look at the states who actually experienced the red wave, Florida and Iowa, emulate those guys. Yep. Stop emulating these other guys. Hour two is next. Thanks, guys. You bet. Right back here on Blaze TV radio and podcast. I'm Steve Dace. He's Aaron McIntyre. He's Todd Erson. You are you, and you can let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. Just email us, Steve at SteveDace.com, D E A C E. Like us on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also. Let us uh, know what you think about what we think. If you subscribe to the podcast, leave us a five-star review. If you like the show, indeed, leave us a five-star review there. And then hit subscribe, or in the case of iTunes, follow. That way, every time we do a new episode, it will show up in your feed every single time. This part of the show, and thanks to all of you that have done that too, uh, Daniel Lewis in Springfield, Virginia says, I finally pulled the trigger uh, on those Miracle Made sheets. It's common for me to wake up in the middle of the night in my own sweat. Once I upgraded to those sheets, it felt like a silken cocoon of perfection. And I woke up dry and well-rested. Great product, great price, great service. That again is for Daniel Lewis in Springfield, Virginia, raving about Miracle Made sheets, which I've been raving about on this show for some time now because they are just absolutely awesome with a, a silver-infused, NASA-inspired fabric that helps with temperature regulating. I can tell you that works year-round. Tried them this time over the winter, too. 
perfect temperature regulation and made it harder than ever to get up out of bed. These things are so comfy. So go to trymiracle.com. See if you agree with Daniel and me. Uh, trymiracle.com slash dace. Trymiracle.com slash dace. When you do, you can save over 40%. And if you use the promo code dace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an additional 20% off. Can't beat it. Miracle is so confident in their product. 100% refund if you're not 100% satisfied. Upgrade your sleep now. TryMiracle.com slash Dace, promo code Dace. TryMiracle.com slash Dace, promo code Dace. All right, let's get to it. It is time for Ask Me Anything. And we have questions from our Facebook followers. Um, Todd, per the traditional process around here, you have uh, gone through those questions. You have determined which ones we are going to answer. A lot of good questions. This week? Uh, we got plenty of good ones, or some... No? But, but plenty of good ones. You, you won't be tired. All right. So, of course, by now, you guys know how the drill works. Todd picks the questions. I've not seen any of them, and I won't know what they are until Aaron gives them to me beginning now. We'll begin with Jonathan Mole, who asks, Is there such a thing as a grandpa nickname that includes pumpkin spice? If so, what have you selected? Papa Pumpkin, Spicy Granddad, Grand Spice, or Grand Pumpkin? I love these ideas. Well, pump, That's a, this is a great one to start on. Pumpa, pumpa. I, pumpa is not bad. I, I. I have already. I already tried to do corn pop. That got shot down by the entire family. So that's not happening, unfortunately. So. Um, Your whole existence as grandpa, you want to be a troll? I, I respect that. Okay, that's very Dacian. <laughs> um, Grand Spice. I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> Grand Spice. That's great. Um, but. Here's the thing. In all seriousness, the dude code does not allow you to gloss yourself. You can't do that. I, I worked with a guy years ago, sweet guy. But the first time I met him in my local market, he introduced himself by his real name. And then he said, but, you know, if you don't mind, call me um, his, uh, his gloss, his self-gloss. Because I'm really trying to make this a thing in the market. How many times while we were working together do you think I called him by that self-gloss? <laughs> what do you think the number is? I've never heard like, that Like, was it story. a nickname or just a different name? No, it was his, it was his, it was his own self-glossed nickname. He came up with his own nickname. He was really That's trying to brand weird. in the market. Yeah. Sweet dude. Love him to death. Okay. Passed away a few years ago. But um, I never used his <laughs> self-gloss name because it's a violation of the dude code. You cannot gloss yourself. Okay, you Does can't it count as glossing if you use a pseudonym on the air because that's pretty uh, that's pretty prevalent in Christian music radio. Such as, well, I don't want to out the person on this national. I know platform, that's what I was trying to get you to do. But if your name is Dexter, <laughs> don't go by the name Scott. I'll just say that. I literally thought his name was Scott, but no, it was. He's What's wrong with Dexter? If anything, go with Dex, man. That's a cool name, right? But not for not for Linda, not for the middle aged soccer mom. She doesn't want to be hearing about how, you know, you You can't be friend. always hopeful with Dex. Yeah, exactly. You have to be only always hopeful with Scott. Uplifting and hopeful. Yeah. Yes. Um are the people who are handling Dex the same people handling Katie Britt? I don't know what's what Dex is up to uh, these days. But you somebody well, Steve, you just tried to gloss yourself by wanting to be known as Corn Pop. You're correct. And my family was correct to reject that. You cannot gloss yourself. All right. The grandkids will determine what your what your grandparent name is, as they should. It should be it should be an organic process. Agreed? That but being of course your daughter may troll you. That's true. That may happen. It would it, knowing Anastasia, it would not shock me at all if she ended up teaching autumn what to call me as a troll and i i respect that completely she was she you have learned well padawan if that is the case uh but but of the of the ones you picked i like grand spice i think that's pretty cool that could be like a you know a rap name right grand spice how about grandpa buckeye yeah, that's right, i don't from- think we're gonna do that one <laughs> don't think we're gonna do that grandpa buck instead of uncle buck grandpa buck yeah Uncle Buck's an underrated gem of a movie, by the way. Great movie. Yeah. 
All right, next question. Yeah, I think we've sufficiently uh, sufficiently answered that uh, first one. Ford Boyd says, what is RFK Jr.'s path to victory? If you were working for his campaign, what strategy would you use? Should he work toward ballot access in all states, but pour all his resources into certain states like New Hampshire, uh, Maine, maybe Vermont, and try to win to send the presidential selection to Congress? Brief footnote here. I always like to... This is representative of quite a few RFK tell me more okay. what do you think questions so probably I th- because i mentioned on, on last week on the but show and on social media the uphill climb he had with ballot access maybe if, in response to some of that but if it it at least in terms of or in response I, to watching last week's state of the uh, union <laughs> yeah any number of things but it seems to be that this thing is turned a page at least amongst some of the people who pay attention to us and what we think that I know you've been obviously mentioning him for a while, but people seem to be ready to hear more or their sense of reality just says, I, my, my, my options are few Aragorn. So his only possible strategy to win, who was it that sent that question? That is Ford. Ford, Ford, his only possible that I can foresee opportunity he'd have to win would be neither side gets it to 270 and it goes to the house. So... Um, I, I can't foresee a scenario minus, a, you know, direct intervention of the hand of God that he can get to 270 electoral college votes. Yeah, I mean, even, even then, his Trump's daughter-in-law is now co-chair of the Republican Party, for God's mm-hmm. sakes. Yeah, I, I mean, Trump's been elected president, and I, I think he has an uphill climb to get to 270 electoral college votes, you know, so... And and the the time that he was elected president, he ended up winning that office in the four decisive states by about seventy seven thousand votes total. Not like in each state on average, but total votes. As to the, I I, I don't know. Here's what I don't know about RFK Jr. My read is that from a strategy perspective, there are two goals I've heard him articulate. And I, but I think they're in conflict. I don't think they can be, they can be, uh, I don't think that they can be accomplished simultaneously. If the, if the goal is to be as impactful in this election as possible, then to me, I would align with the Libertarian Party and get automatic 50 state access. Now, that's if you can. That's if you can do that. I don't think that's the cinch people think. The Libertarian Party convention is coming up. Um, I think it's right around Memorial Day, so we're only about two and a half months away. And and these aren't like the Ron Paul, Rand Paul Libertarian. Well, they're certainly not Rand Paul Libertarians. There would be some Ron Paulers there. But what I'm what I mean by that is these are people that are not int- that, that if they wanted to be politically pragmatic, they they would have made accommodations to be um, to have more of a of an agency in the process. Like these are you know these are the kinds of libertarians that are proud that they that they don't have more agency. And and RFK Jr. If you look at what he's running on. He, he would certainly be more of a, would I go with Red Caesar? Purple Caesar, maybe? He would be more of that than that kind of... What I mean is, these are the kinds of libertarians that are like, we're not building any walls because they could be used to keep people in and not just keep people out. Open borders kind of stuff. That kind of libertarian. So... I mean, RFK Jr., what he's, what he's articulated on the border is way to the right of the Libertarian Party, guys. Way to the right. Honestly, it's way to the right of any Republican presidential candidate in the last generation, except for Trump. So, I, I'm not entirely sure you can herd those cats under the siren's song of, well, you know, this, would, this is a chance to, you know, Maybe get double digits as a libertarian presidential candidate when you've never had that before. I, I don't know if 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 that would be that attractive to that element of libertarian. But if the goal is to be as impactful as possible in this election and try to roll snake eyes, then I'd run as a libertarian and, and get on all fifty states and 
Um, I wouldn't have to worry about what I'm what I'm efforting and exhausting right now in terms of both manpower and resources to try to do it independently. If the if the goal is to start a new party, and I have seen some stuff where this is he's he's articulated this, I, I then then I think you go down the road you're on right now. But but that could also get in the way of being impactful in this in this campaign fully. Because I, I still think getting on the ballot in all 50 states is a, is a climb. I, I think I'm, I'm a little less pessimistic about it now than I was at this time last week. This time last week was kind of the first time I'd really looked seriously at his effort. And I'm like, Ew. Then a couple things happened. Um, getting on the Nevada ballot last week, winning the case in Idaho, I think is even more important than the, than the Nevada ballot. Why? Because you now have a court precedent that you can take to other states to try to get them to delay their ballot certification process to include you. Um, so I'm not quite as pessimistic that he can do it, but I'm, I'm still not optimistic that that's achievable. So I, I, I can't answer your question any more than that because I, I don't know what their priority is. I, my reading, I could be wrong. I don't think you're going to be able to both try to maximize your impact in this election and use your candidacy as a vehicle for another party at the same time. I think if you had started this at, at this time last year, he was still running as a Democrat. If he had started running as an independent from the beginning, I think there would have been enough time to maybe do both of those things. I don't think there's enough time, and I could be wrong, but that's my read. I think you have to choose one at this hour. Next, we will go to Jennifer Graves. Uh, Will the liberal Supreme Court judges wake up to how evil Biden is after the way he addressed them in his State of Disunion campaign ad? (laughs) No. I love this question. Yeah. No. no. I I giggled the same way. No. I... I assumed that that was sarcastic, right? I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't have, I mean, no. no. I don't have another answer. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds says, uh, I've read C.S. Lewis, G.K. Chesterton, Tony Evans, Frank Turek, Jonathan Kahn, and Steve Dace in the entire Bible. Who do you recommend for my next faith-based deep dive? That's, first of all, present company excluded. Very impressive. What I what I would urge you to do next is um, um, shameless plug. I would uh, encourage you to read Spurgeon because I'm going to be using him as kind of my uh, guiding light in our upcoming Roman study, and he is considered by many the greatest the greatest English speaking um, pastor yet to yet to live. So I would urge that, and then I would urge to go and read um, stuff from the Church Fathers, Arrhenius Against Heresies, um, Justin Martyr, um, Augustine, City of God. I would, I would go read some of that stuff. And, um, and then I would study the Reformation. And I'm confident enough in my Protestantism, I'd tell you to study both sides of it. I'd, I'd go look at the dialogues and debates between Erasmus and Luther, for example. Um, I mean, that's the, that, you know, post, post ascendance, well, post, post Constantine, I'll put it that way. Post Constantine, the Reformation's the most pivotal moment in the history of Christianity, regardless of which side of, of it you rely on, uh, you find yourself on. So I would, so on one hand, I'd want to study pre-Reformational church via the church fathers, and then I would study the Reformation, and I'd study Spurgeon because he's considered by most to be the greatest English-speaking minister that ever lived, at least so far. Good answer. Thank you. Good answer. Next, we go to Diane Schultz Rorschach, who says, I've been reading Undercover by John Bevere. He talks about honoring leaders, people in authority, because they are God's anointed, or appointed, I should say. It's not our job to judge them. Even David refused to dishonor Saul when he was being persecuted by him. I struggle with this when it comes to our current president and his regime. Do you struggle with this, or how do you deal with it? It's amazing. Once again, when we just we've we reset, did this last yeah. time, 
We do this all. I'm fascinated. As you, I, every oh, time gonna, it comes we're, up, we're going to do it again at what? some point in the Roman study when we get to Romans and I 13. I asked you guys last time. Yeah. What is going on with this thing? So I don't know John Bevere. I, I, the name sounds vaguely familiar. I'm not familiar with uh, him though, or much of his work. So please don't don't take anything I, I am saying as any kind of con- condemnation or criticism because I don't I don't know enough about him to render a verdict. Like when you asked me, some of you asked me, la- or one of you asked me last week about Preston Sprinkle. I've got enough experience with him. I'll render a verdict. In the case of John Bevere, I do not. Um, but. Can I just fast forward this thing? Try to say, th- doesn't the implication of this mean that no matter what a government does, no matter what, which seems to be problematic for a lot of other parts in the Bible, but if you go by this, you just have to take it? I think What's it's, going on? I think it's very important for my fellow evangelicals to understand it is a Catholic making this case. And here's why. Because what's your number one, as an evangelical, what's your number one criticism of him going to be? What's it going to be, Aaron? Of Todd? As a Catholic. As any, or any Catholic, for that matter. Uh, Unbiblical stuff. That they don't follow the Bible, yeah. they listen to whom? The Pope. And so anything the Pope says that they do and everything he says is okay, even if it's not biblical, right? That's, right. that's the number one baseline criticism any evangelical is going to have of your tribe, correct? Yeah, it's right and up yet, there. And yet you're the one that's on here actually asserting the biblical understanding of a chain of command. Okay. So if I, I don't know John Bevere's work, I don't know this book. So you I know cannot, Lisa Bevere. That's, that's her husband. I don't, I'm yeah, sorry. They're both Christian authors. Okay. I, I can't, so I, I can't speak to the book nor him. I'm just going to speak to the, the questioner's assertion. Okay. As a, um, I don't. I haven't read the book. I can't speak of it in context. I don't know the author. Can't speak of him in context. So I'm just going to address the the assertion of the question that the emailer asked. As, aside from those things, okay? Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, I, in that case, you would if you believe that you should never vote because by voting you are rendering a judgment. You have made a determination. Which do you think is the preferable option? And you're not permitted to do that. So you shouldn't vote. Um, The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. Romans 13, which we'll eventually get there, either later this year or next year. We'll see how long it takes us to get through Romans. Who knows? But again, give honor to whom honor is owed. I am the leader of my home. Why am I the leader of my home? Whom appointed me the leader of my home? Who did it? That's God. God. Now, who's the real leader? The one who, the appointee or the appointer? Who's the real leader? The appointer. The appointer. Because he's the one that has the authority that can de- that yeah. to delegate it, correct? Yeah. So I am the leader of my home, but am I the actual authority of my home? No. The authority comes from the one who can appoint yeah. and delegate. So therefore, God is the authority. I am the leader which means I am primarily responsible, but I'm not the authority. If I should decide at any point in time that as a family we should do things and embrace things that the authority, God says, are clearly wrong, should my wife say and my children, well, you are the leader. You were appointed by God. Therefore, we must follow you, even if it means in disobedience of the of God's authority. Is that what they should do? No, no, because I didn't say I was the authority, did I? No, I said I was the leader. Granting me the position of authority is granting me honor. I am not owed. The ultimate authority is God. If my family follows me into the abyss and disobeys God, when they get to eternity, will they be able to say to God, well, we were going to follow you, but this leader you gave us was terrible. And so therefore we followed him instead. So we're victims. Will that work? Spoiler alert. No, no, because when they get to eternity, will they give an account for their lives to me as their leader or to God as their authority? Which one? To God. To God. See, none of this is... You've been, 
There's plenty of issues that are complicated and therefore you've had to offer complicated issues on and you're capable of doing so. Again, none of this is particularly... Com- is this just... Is this just stubborn, like, founding puritanical romanticism or something? Because if you're in Hitler's Germany, are you saying... That's just the breaks, man. I gotta def- I don't... I'm trying, man. I don't. I'm, you're I, not. I think. I think what's what's hard for people to grasp, and maybe we can. Maybe I'm off base here, is that I, I think they're struggling with the question: Did God appoint Joe Biden's handlers to run this country? Is that does that make sense? Yes. That's that's I think what people are struggling with. That's why this has been brought up over and over again. But- Okay. I'm sorry though, but if you're if this there is coming- there there is no the that same book of Romans says there is no author, there is no authority on earth that God has not permitted no. or allowed. Okay. So has God either permitted actively or or passively or actively appointed Joe Biden to rule in America at this point in time? It yes is the answer. Now, let's say God actively appointed Joe Biden. Given the overall condition of the country, would that be an unfair or unjustified appointment? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If God's permissive will permitted it to occur, because we're under a Romans 1 judgment, and so therefore we are ingrates, and his restraining hand has been removed. And we are going to Burger King commercial this thing and have it our way. Would that be, given the condition of this culture, would that be an unjust act of God? No. No. So whether he was actively appointed or passively permitted under God's will, I do not know. What I don't know is him being the leader of this country is an accurate, justified reflection of the state of said country. We're not victims. That does not mean, by the way, that we disobey God because he either appointed or permitted Joe Biden to rule. Same analogy applies when it comes to me and my own household. When you go to eternity, well, you know, we were going to shut the, we are going to, we were going to throw the groomers in jail and, you know, stop them from castrating the kids. But you made Joe, you let Joe Biden be president. So we figured that that was just totally okay. Is that going to work? And we're victims here uh, because your sovereign choice was bad. Is that going to work? No, because here's what we don't know. Why? Why did God either allow or appoint Joe Biden? Was it to perhaps judge us for the rectitude of our actions? Would that be justified given the rectitude of our actions? Yes. Could it be that he did so in order to test us? How much more evil are you willing to tolerate? When will you cry out to me? When will you turn from your wicked ways? When will you repent? Well, you clearly haven't suffered enough. One more trip around the mountain. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. Are both of them simultaneously for a sovereign God who exists outside of time and space? Are both of them simultaneously possible? Yes. Which I, I think for believers, I think it's simultaneously possible for first praying prayers of supplication for the state of Joe Biden's soul. And in the same breath, after you've prayed for his soul, prayers of imprecation against his evil plans that they would be thwarted. That's possible for you to do. Wrong, am I wrong? That's that that's the that's the nature. That's the, the, the nature, the kind, kind of uh that, that's the nature of the of a lot of aspects of the Christian walk. It's both and, not as, either or. As somebody who has an exhaustingly bad pope right now, a lot of you on this on the uh, evangelical side of the tribe seem to be making this verse your pope for un. I don't understand. Listen to the, what the Catholic is saying to you. He is correct. He's the one hermeneutically doing this right. Go ahead, Todd. Well, I just, this is, if you, if you expect, if you expect me to, to believe that you on your own and your Bible are capable of understanding 
every verse of all 66 books that you have, you, you keep coming back to this show over and over again with this verse, I got questions because it's not that complicated. It is because I'm guessing, and this is not a compliment to us, I am guessing that I just gave a more in-depth exegetical study on the delegation and appointment of earthly authority under the control of a sovereign God than almost any evangelical in this audience has ever heard. Understand. Is that bad? John, yeah. John MacArthur is perhaps the greatest intellectual preacher of this era in evangelicalism. And it wasn't until Gavin Newsom knocked on his door that he got this right. He taught this wrong for over 50 years. And then suddenly when, this, when, when, the, when, when Nero comes to your door and says, shut her down, and you're, you're the, the Holy Spirit inside of you, that instinct says, what? no, 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 Nero's not Lord. But the problem is you have no hermeneutic to act on, and it would be in total conflict because you told your audience for, sorry, 40 years, you told them that the American Revolution violated Romans 13. Didn't you do an interview with Ben Shapiro like seven, eight years ago? He said it again. Yeah. He played it on the show. Yeah. And so now it, it's fascinating to watch the movie, The Essential Church, that talks about this, and you see MacArthur's elders literally have to go back and do their own re-exegetical study uh, and hermeneutic of Romans 13 after they taught it wrong for 40 plus years. And it wasn't until Nero came to their door that they were willing to look at the text the way it actually is, as well as this is again why we need tradition. Small T. But this is why we need it. Context. We lack context. And so we don't have a, a contextual application in, in many cases to our faith. Too many evangelicals believe either the faith began on All Hallows' Eve when in 1517 when Luther nailed the, the, the theses to the door or sometime in the mid-19th century when the, when the Plymouth Brethren and the Schofield Bible began teaching dispensationalism in America. And because of that, this context is lost. People were getting converted and saved for a millennia and a half before Luther figured some things out. There were great theological thoughts and debates before John Nelson Darby came to America. But most of us have not been taught this. And you can't rise above your own worldview. I hope this helps. And this question probably can't be answered enough for the times in which we are about to embark upon and that are already here. More in a moment. AJ wrote me this note over the weekend. I recently ordered a year's supply of medication. There is a formulary that uh, Jace Medical can't send to my state of South Carolina. I asked if there was a workaround or substitute for me to still receive. Miss Crystal from Jace called me and, in, uh, and ensured something would be worked out. I received an email two days after that conversation from Miss Crystal that Jace had found a workaround and a shipment is on the way. This all happened within a matter of a few days to get accomplished. Very impressive customer service by Jace Medical. And that's just another success story for a company that uh, we're proud to partner with here on the Steve Day Show. Make sure your vital medications have a backup. Just in case the next so-called emergency says, well, you know, your vital medication medications might be dangerous, might be horse-paced. And yes, you, you can actually include ivermectin in your Jace case if you would like. Customize it for the medications that you need and have to have. And get that peace of mind you have to have as well. JaceMedical.com. Enter the code DACE. That's where you want to go for a discount. Jace Medical. J-A-S-E. JaceMedical.com. Enter the code DACE at checkout for the discount at JaceMedical.com. Enter the code DACE at checkout for a discount. All right. Let's get back to some Ask Me Anything. Aaron. 
All right, next up, we'll go to Joel Fleming. Two weeks ago, cell phones were inoperable. Then last week, Meta was down for a while. So isn't it painfully obvious that our republic is about to be attacked and sent back 100 years or so regarding technology and modern comforts of today and our current demise? I don't know. Sure. <laughs> but it, could it be? Sure. Could it just be that we're more aware of these things than ever before because we're more beholden to them? You know, ask yourself this question so you have perspective. I'm not saying to, you know, abandon your uh, your narrative, but in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, with electricity and those sorts of things and the telephone becoming mainstreamed into every walk of life in America, did they? I wonder, did they think when the power went out in the 30s, uh-oh, you know, someone, yeah, the, the Japs got the grid. You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, when the, when the, when, you know, when the radio went out in the 40s, was it just like, oh no, you know, it's the Nazis. When, when the, when, you know, the phone and the TV and everything went out in the 50s, was it, uh, you know, was it the Red Scare? I, I don't know. You know, I just, I, I just would keep some of those things in perspective. But I also, I, I, tomorrow, if there was a massive EMP from North Korea that knocked us out for a week, would you be shocked to hear that news? No. No. And anything that knocks out all our social media, quite frankly, I might thank our enemies because that's kind of a gift. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, I'm not sure North Korea, any of our enemies want to knock out much of American social media at this particular point in time. But you know what I'm trying to say. Sure. All right, next question. Michael Rader says, what are your thoughts on the apocryphal books? As a lifelong Baptist, I think very often they're viewed with disdain, if not outright contempt. Can or should we view them in the same kind of way we do the writings of Josephus as a historical traditional uh, tradition of the time that they were written? So I'm not an expert on this particular topic, but I, from what I understand, I think you have to look at this as a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there are... There are books that are considered apocryphal for you as a Baptist because they are accepted in Catholic canon and not yours. And then there would be books that would be considered apocryphal that Catholics and Protestants would both view to be scams. Okay. I mean, I, I know you've commented um, positively on Maccabees before. Correct. But. Yep. So, um, and and I so I think you have to take each one with a with a on a case by case basis. Okay. Um, That's exactly right. Uh, and I think you need, would need to ask me a specific book, and I'd have to research why that wasn't included in the canon, um, because there, there's the there, uh, there's the argument that we had post Reformation with some of the authenticity of certain books um, and their authorship um, with with the, with Rome, which is why we didn't include them in the Protestant canon. And then there are then there were tons of of, of books claiming to be scripture that were written um, as part of the the first heresy of the early church, Gnosticism, that any form of small o orthodoxy would reject up until this day and age and were largely repackaged by Dan Brown for his uh, for his books. They're, they're largely just a repackaging of Gnostic heretical gospels that aren't. Next question. Next, we'll go to Jeffrey Michael, who says, what type of situations do you think we could see this summer? A George Floyd type summer, more political arrests or other assorted chaos? I think there will be violence after the election, regardless of the outcome. That was one of my 10 predictions at the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, that makes me sad. But I, I think that that will occur. Um. But this summer, without even being able to protect, I mean, a specific kind of chaos, who knows? But is it, is that baked into the cake this summer? Some kind of zaniness will ensue just because well, they now it, they're guys in charge now. So destabilizing the cities doesn't help their narrative at all. It actually hurts it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense. It makes sense when Trump is in charge to, you know, send a bunch of crisis actors into places and destabilize urban areas. Um, On the other hand, and then you force Trump into, you know, a, what, what he viewed as a no win scenario, which was to do nothing and look weak or to act strongly and create a backlash as a general rule. In fact, other than the conversation we had about chain of command with another Romans 13 question last hour. This will be the most, and I'm confident that what I'm about to say will be the most important thing um, I will say this hour. 
All right. As a general rule, people always respond more affirmatively to strength than they do weakness. In any era, even in this era, even in this era, people respond more affirmatively to strength than weakness. So if Trump had acted the way we wanted him to in the summer of 2020, what would have happened? All of the same people that hated him before he did would have hated him all the more. All the same people that weren't going to vote for him before he did were still not going to vote for him. But he would have rallied people that were either on the fence and sick of all that crap or, or inspired his own base all the more. He viewed it as a no-win scenario. It was actually an only-win scenario. There was only a win. He just didn't have the strength to act on it. And so he ends up, him and his Secret Service detail, end up running from the White House from their own urban unrest across the street there in D.C. And looked weak. People always respond to strength more than weakness. In any era, any language, any custom, people are always, always more tempted to go with the strong man, right or left. No, regardless of the ideology, then they are weakness. Loki was right. We were made to be ruled. You know what secures our comfort? Weakness or strength? Which one secures the comfort we love? Strength. At least the strength is the one we think does anyway, and that's why we respond to it. Liberty or security? Traditionally, the human species has wanted which of the two? Security. Security. Does weakness or strength give us the security we think we need? Strength. So destabilizing their own cities would make Biden look weak. If I'm the Trump campaign team, I'm on my knees praying they do that. So I don't think you'll see urban unrest, anything like George Floyd, anything of that nature. I don't. With one exception. And I think that this is what they're afraid of with the current um, Israeli yeah. rhetoric that Biden is, is flaunting. I think they're concerned about well, really one state in particular. And that's the Muslim population in suburban Detroit in the state of Michigan. I think there is concern that that could completely blow up. It's such a concern. Ted Cruz is wishing you, wishing you a happy Ramadan again over the weekend. So I'm sure every he Islamist, did. he did. Yeah, he did. I'm sure every, him and Heidi, both, by the way, just to, for the record. Um, I'm sure every Islamist, you, got, you didn't think, I, you thought I was, did you really think I was going to go this whole episode and never mention it? All y'all out there. It's your first day ever listening to this show, wasn't it? Anyway, um, of course it was going to get mentioned. Just needed to not be contrived. So um, I'm sure every Islamist in Dearborn was like, you know what? We were absolutely going to blow up. We're, we were absolutely going to blow up uh, the D here. But I read Ted Cruz's tweet wishing me a happy Robin on and I'm, Gonna beat my sword, my curved sword of Muhammad into a plowshare. I'm sure that happened, right? No, 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 it didn't happen. But that would be the one exception. I, I think that they're actually going to strive for numbing agents, not chaos. Contrive booms in the housing market. Try to at least get one Fed rate cut. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to contrive numbing agents because they're in power. That's the other for way sure. Around. But their own side is such a tinderbox. I mean, not that just, is also true, which is why got, I mentioned Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah. But then you've got pro-Palestinian academia. You've got uh, illegal immigrants now in warm weather. Who uh, you you've got people all winter long who've been sitting in the middle of interstates. You've got, I mean, look at you, that beating in St. Louis and black uh, uh, inner city Black America. I mean, there's only so much they can do to tamp all that down, man. I agree, but they'll try. Hey, folks, uh, did you know Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery in the country with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants, over 2 million happy customers right here in the U.S. They've got everything you could possibly want, like fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more. Whatever you're interested in, they have it for you. So find the perfect fit for your climate and space. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online, and your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. And along with their 30-day Alive and Thrive Guarantee, they offer free plant consultation forever. 
waiting on our order from fast growing trees. Why? Because they wait till the weather's warm to send it to you so that the stuff doesn't, you know, be ruined before you have a chance to, to you know, put good use to it. Uh, the ordering process was, I mean, easy. The hardest part was the options. There are so many. So that's a good problem to have. You don't need to have a yard or a lot of space. You can grow a lemon, avocado, olive, or fig tree even inside your home on top of wide on top of the wide variety of house plants that are available. So this spring, they've got the best deals online, up to half off on select plants and other deals. And if you're one of our listeners slash viewers, get an additional 15% off your first purchase when you use the code DACE at checkout, that's an additional 15% off your first purchase at fastgrowingtrees.com using the code DACE. Fastgrowingtrees.com. Use the promo code DACE at checkout. Next up, we're going to go to Brian Corlett. Steve, I love the show and your election and polling analysis is both what drew me in in November of 2020 and continues to be comprehensive. I appreciate your admission of being way off in your red wedding prediction, all of which is why I continue to be surprised how little you account for Google and big tech at all's gerrymandering of votes. Robert Epstein has done great work here, and it seems that Google and Facebook's election <clears throat> fortification in 20 and 2022 really, pardon the pun, trumps ballot harvesting, mail-in voting, and the other myriad shenanigans that you've thoroughly addressed. Valid point. Here, here's why. Um, it's not because your point is invalid. Um, it's because the way I tend to work internally is... Uh, and, and like most men, I live in a fight or flight mechanism. That, that's kind of the male way of, of, of reacting to situations. Uh, so, so one of the ways that I manifest that is if it's something I think I can control. You know, Lord, grant the serenity prayer. Grant me the power to accept the things I cannot change. I'm pretty okay with things I cannot change most of the time. The, the things I struggle with is when I think I or we can change it. I, I don't believe we have any power whatsoever to do anything about it right now. I mean, if you can't ban, if you can't ban TikTok, you, 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 you got no chance up against what you just described. Nothing. So where I do think we, we have some power and leverage is on things like ballot harvesting and things of that nature. And so I, I am just kind of programmed to try and focus my energies. I have angst when I think I can do something about something or people I either uh, am aligned with or gave authority to can do something about something like the angst we just had about our legislature and whether they're going to fold on the gender yeah. issue last hour. Right. OK. Uh, I just am wired that I am much more angst driven about the things I think are within my control or dominion than the things that are not. And so if 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 we're if we can't even ban obvious Shycom agit prop, then I, I don't know how we would even contemplate being able to counter uh, Google, arguably the most powerful corporation in the world. But it's a good point. But that's my answer. Next, uh, we go to a two part uh, question. Uh, this is from uh, Kelly Reed. Uh, were you able to see the Islamic eschatology in the latest Dune movie as even a recruitment for throwing off Western control and any idea, uh, any idea how it's being received in Islamic countries? And then paired with this one from Michael Ingram. Did you notice Dune 2 was one of the most pro-life movies ever? Clearly depicts an unborn child as a human being. Surprised the libs aren't in an uproar over it. So there is, there are numerous theological references, both um, Judeo-Christian and Islamic in the film. Um, uh, you have a, a ragtag group of people circling a desert, you know, in search of, you know, in this case, restoring a land flowing with milk and honey or water and, and, you know, um, and, and the blessings of nature that go along with that, similar to the Israelites. Um, on the other hand, there is very specific Islamic-oriented language used to describe their religious practices. They pray on mats, okay? Um, there is a messianic figure, and is he a real messiah or a fake one? W the way I, I, you know, I don't know enough about Frank Herbert, never read the books growing up, so I, I, can't, I can't reconstruct for you his original construction. I do think that... Um, if you, if you have a problem with religion as a general rule, you can find things in this story you will like. If you have a problem with, um, Islam 
as a religious practice you will find stories here that you like or an angle to the story you will like if you have you know i know christian friends who view, view the could see it almost as a metaphor for the rise of an antichrist you will find that too i think that the 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 again i don't know frank herbert's original ideological political bent but for modern um audiences i think whichever narrative you walk in there with any of those three if you're a Bible-based Christian, you're like, well, I mean, that's what happens. You follow the false religion of Islam and you end up with an antichrist. If you are, a, you know, a, a materialist hardcore, you're like, that's what happens when you follow any religion, okay? You know, I, I, I think you're going to find things in there that you can internalize as favorable to your narrative without knowing Frank Herbert's original belief system. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. As to the other question, it is true. Um, we, we see a mom communicate with her unborn baby directly. In the womb, we see that same unborn baby communicate even with her brother via uh, via the womb. And there is certainly um, embryonic versions of personhood that are bestowed upon her character in the film. That's very accurate. Yeah. All right. Good questions, guys. We're back editing tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck, right here on Blaze TV. We're going to stick around, do overtime, and record that for subscribers. For the rest of you, we will see you tomorrow. Until then, Romans 828.